for example, if you wanted to limit uh, the, the size of the edges on, on, on certain areas, you can, you can just create more sizing functions. So you would go under create sizing and then you would pick an edge. And for example, let's say we want this, this and this edge to be made up of two millimeter elements. Okay, so we would put two millimeters and leave everything as soft and blah, 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 and then click another update. I'm just going to uh, rotate our body slightly here so you can see it after it's done. Okay, and I'm going to click update. Okay, it's finished the mesh. So you can see the obvious effect is uh, our edge, our, our edge is sized to, to two millimeter elements and then we have a growth of 20% which is kind of reached already here and this would keep growing if the element size on the face itself wasn't limited to 10 millimeters already. So uh, Fluent Germany also kind of uh, suggests with, the, with, the, with this graph here, uh, this is basically kind of a graphical method, graphic method for estimating uh, surface mesh reference length and uh, to achieve uh, a desired Y plus or a mesh that, uh, that your computer can handle, you can kind of uh, go back here and for our free stream velocity, which is going to be 40 millimeters, uh, I would like to have a kind of a coerce mesh for a start and uh, this is why I've limited our uh, elements to 10 millimeters on the, on the surfaces of the body. But later on we can go to refinements and stuff like that and if you have a fine mesh it's going to be around uh, 10 or more, more million elements and uh, you can see that they said uh, a coarse mesh will be approximately 2 to 5 million cells and we, we ended up with around 1.7 or 1.8 million. So read this document carefully, that's my suggestion for the day. Um, okay, so I'm going to reset this back, this edge sizing, I'm going to delete it, uh, create the mesh once more and then we're going to go into Fluent and do a little bit of case setup. But uh, since I've gone with this video over 30 minutes already, and it's going to have to be split into more than two parts on YouTube, uh, I think another uh, interesting thing to do is what I have did with my uh, project thesis for college was I had to refine the underbody region of the car. And uh, this is currently captured in this uh, body sizing, which is uh, our car box, uh, which is 15 millimeters. But for example, we would like this region maybe to have a 10, 10 millimeter uh, element size. So we can exit this once more and uh, go back into the geometry. And we're just going to repeat the process, basically. We're going to extrude another body, which is just going to capture the um, the underbody and limit our element size to 10, 10 millimeters there. So another YZ plane sketch, okay? Go under sketching, rectangle, and let's just say kind of something like this. Uh, I'm going to dimension this. The height of our body is 50 millimeters. So we're going to put it as 50 and maybe size this also to, uh, we want it to, maybe slightly more extended forward, but let's say a thousand and fifty is going to be fine for one one zero two. And uh, we're going to do another vertical here from here to here. And we're going to say that this is going to be 50 or even 20 millimeters is more than enough. We want it to have more here at the front. So this is our sketch and I'm just going to go into modeling and extrude and do another extrusion. Uh, now we want it to kind of be the same as uh, the same width as our body. So I'm going to put 150 here. No. Nope. Okay. Let's say around 200 is enough. Generate and we have another solid here, which is going to be our body of influence for the underbody. Okay. We're going to call this an underbody box and it can remain as a solid. Freeze it again, exit and under meshing, yes. Okay, 
and we are going to just add another sizing function to our mesh after it does the attach. Okay, that's done. And we're going to go insert sizing and just pick our air domain and go under body of influence here and just pick our other body here. Okay, and tell me 10 millimeters. I'm just going to hide it right away. Hide and do we have deleted that uh, edge sizing, so I'm just going to update once more. And now there's at least three from what I can see. Okay, yeah, this is a bit better. Okay, you can see, for example, this region here is where the elements are 15 millimeters, and this here is 10, so slightly better. Uh, and our mesh is kind of done for now. Uh, another way to, to do boundary layers, which I kind of skipped over, if you didn't want to use the inflation here and the program controlled for the whole body, and if you wanted, let's say, different inflation methods on different surfaces here, you can always go here, insert and inflation. And then you would kind of pick a surface. Oh, I'm sorry. You would pick the body here and then under boundary you would pick a surface. And then you have an option of, well, basically the same options as before, but you can maybe say that this is the, the rear of the body and uh, the flow is going to be kind of slower there and the Y plus is going to be smaller. So what you would like to do is maybe bring those elements further away or increase the increase the distance of the centroid of the first cell from the surface. So you can do a first aspect ratio and then maybe you would do, let's say, uh, a 3 here and a 6 on, on this body, on this, I'm sorry, on this surface here, because the air is going to be accelerating here and uh, it's going to give you a larger Y plus. So you would like to kind of maybe drop the drop the in drop this first cell here you would maybe like it to be 20 percent lower so you can you can do all different sort of inflations or for every surface of the body uh, as long as obviously you would keep five elements or i mean five layers inside so it can be interconnected between between each surface um, okay so i'm going to delete that one uh, what else okay there's another option here, it's called map faced meshing. And what this means is, uh, okay, first thing to show you is, let's delete this. If you check your geometry and go under mesh here and preview or show mappable faces. This is going to show you all the faces in your geometry which can have a mapped face mesh slapped onto them. And what this means is that it's going to arrange the triangles on the surface mesh uh, kind of in a, in a very uh, distinct order. So instead of talking about it, I'm just going to show you mapped face mesh. And uh, it obviously pre-chose all the 14 mappable ones here, but we just want to show you on the rear maybe. And leave everything as default and another update. I'm just going to... and rotate this a bit here so you can see it better after it's done and click update okay and this is the result of our mapped face so as you can see it arranged them in a geometrical order um, now this can be suitable for uh, some uses where the where the flow is kind of um, in the same direction as a flat surface or something like that but Sometimes it can, it can create uh, a bit more strained or skewed elements. So I usually don't really use uh, the mapped face meshing option. Uh, and also because my body almost, um, it doesn't have, uh, I mean, the, the model that I, that I used uh, did not really have any flat surfaces except the underbody. So it was all curved surfaces and those are not really mappable. So I'm just going to delete this, uh, remesh once more, and then we're going to go into fluent case setup. Uh, 
okay this is our mesh uh, but um, I kind of forgot one more thing this control box which we call the car box is all well and fine but uh, the characteristic thing about the AMAT body is um, the wake region behind the body which is kind of going to be maybe up to here and I'm just going to create another uh, refinement uh, volume control and then it's going to be really the final mesh okay another quick sketch in the YZ plane and rotate the body here and zoom in a bit rectangle let's say we want it to go from here where the kind of the, the separation is going to occur and where the uh, vortices are going to start and maybe just dimension it a bit and say 360 and let's say this one is going to be 750 and then another vertical one for this to this and let's say this to be 500 okay 520 perfect modeling extrude and we want this to be 200 also okay generate and this uh, well let let's extend it a bit because you never know when it's going to go to the side with the with the vortex maybe for 275 okay that's kind of enough uh, rename this to a wake box leave it as a solid and do another freeze for maybe later on close that mesh again and I'm just going to limit the element size to 10 millimeters there so it's the same as the rear surface and then we're going to really go into fluent I promise okay it's done the attach sizing pick the body selection body of influence and the body of influence is going to be this one element size 10 geometry hide the body uh, one thing I forgot to mention when doing the sphere of influence it might be useful for some people you can either pick a vertex anywhere on the car where there is a vertex you can uh, display them here uh, where is it where is it where is it where is it there is a I know there used to be uh, like a show ver vertices or whatever ah, yeah here okay and then you can pick a vertex and pick any of these and uh, it can be a center for your sphere or but what if you wanted to put uh, the center of the sphere let's say on the on the face here what you can do is go into coordinate systems and you can insert a coordinate system and then say in global coordinates and we can move it okay here is our origin and let's say we want it um, 200 millimeters to the front and uh, 55 millimeters or let's say 80 millimeters to the top and with the x direction let's say 25 so you can get your coordinate system anywhere and you can call it let's rename this to blah blah and then if you inserted another sizing and you chose your body again and picked a sphere of influence then you can put a sphere center here as the blah blah and another radius and stuff like that and you know the rest so delete that and delete this uh, I had a lot of trouble uh, kind of finding that out in the mechanical aspect of uh, workbench so I just wanted to kind of let you know that it's there so I'm just going to update and it's going to be done okay the mesh is done and as you can see there is a limit here where the where the elements are still 10 millimeters so that's it and I'll see you in the next tutorial